So just to clarify in terms of why we're doing this webinar just so shortly after the other Huddle Board webinar is because we're a continuous improvement organization. And when we finished our last one, we got feedback that, you know what, you didn't really tell us anything new in terms of what we can do, what we can't do, uh, those kinds of things, and a little bit more detail around how the Huddle Boards work. So this webinar is more about that, is about what you should do, what you should avoid doing, and those kinds of things. So our mission is to deliver practical solutions to as many organizations as possible, and we are all about practicality, so things that you can implement right away in your day-to-day -day work. So the first uh, poll or question we're looking to answer is, what is your experience with huddle boards? So we're just going to launch the poll. There we go. So that's pretty good. 50%, 60% uh, of you use huddle boards on a regular basis. 14% um, have previous experience with huddle boards. 14% have have heard about it, and 14% are oh, I'm excited to learn more. That's awesome. So we don't have 100% votes yet, but that's okay. We'll probably close that off, and we'll continue on to the next piece. So those are the, the polling results right there. So, um, can everybody see my, uh, no, they're not, oh, sorry, there we go. That's where it is. There we go. I had accidentally clicked the wrong button. So I was looking at that. So what is a pace huddle? Because there's lots of different types of huddles. And Allison, there's your cake again. I love the horn and pain cake when they launched their huddle board. Um, this is just such a fun thing to do is, is to, to bring a cake out. And it's part of our dues. Make sure you celebrate every stage, of, every stage of the way. So it's a tool for operational excellence that enhances employee engagement by promoting a culture of discussing daily improvements, challenges, and celebrating success. It's basically something that helps improve communication, and it is the difference between, you know, the average organization and the really excellent organization. So when we talk about operational excellence, sounds like, you know, big words. What does that really mean? It means that an organization that's uh, moving towards operational excellence actually has a clear vision. So they actually have a clear, compelling vision that they've established they actually have very clear objectives that they're looking to meet, right? Um, and they have metrics and targets that are that that wrap around the objectives and that are making sure that the vision happens, right? And uh, you know, a lot of organizations may say, "Well, we have that." You know, it just it's really difficult to actually make it happen, and it's true. Some organizations actually don't have that. Other organizations do have it in form of their strategic plan or what have you. But the part that they miss out on is really, at the end of the day, over here, is actually aligning them to, um, to find the possibilities, to understand what are the projects that can happen in a day-to-day -day environment. In order to understand those projects that can happen, one of the places you can get that started is in your daily improvements. So the huddle boards really fit into this daily improvement section as we go along. So I'll answer questions as I go along. I see there's a couple coming in, but I'll answer them as we go along. So in the daily improvements piece is where the huddle boards come in, and it's really there to engage everyone in the journey. If you're wondering what this big triangle is, or as Joanna calls it, what this big machine is, <laughs> it's, uh, um, it's basically, it is a machine at the end of the day, and it's, it is our framework. It's, we call it our critical to excellence framework. We used to call it a critical to vision framework. And it's there to basically engage, um, to make any idea possible in your organization. And uh, when we talk about structuring teams to build capabilities, there's a green belt training. So we need to build capacity in your organization. So we provide green belt training that I'll talk about just a little bit later, because but we just disrupted the market and cut our training down significantly. And it's actually a good thing. And you'll see that in a bit. So 
you uh, know the current score, which means you're actually tracking against your metrics to see where you're at. And you're making sure that you know you sustain the gains as you go along, and there's reviews that, that happen, so you know how to how to re reflect back to look forward. So the three goals of Huddle Boards at Pace when you first start going, so these are employee engagement Huddle Boards, is better teamwork, improved communication, and solving problems before they become major issues. So the uh, so these are some of the the organizations that have actually launched uh, Huddle Boards with us. There's not it's not a comprehensive list, but uh, on average, you probably have at least five to seven different boards within each organization. I just met with Atlas Copco, was it this week or last week? It was last week on Friday, and um, when we were when we were meeting with Atlas Copco, they were talking about how happy they are with their huddle boards and how it really encourages decision making from the ground up. I wish I could have got Ed or George to attend um, the webinar, but I wasn't able to, uh, you know snag them at this last minute to, to say a, little, a few things. So in terms of a chat question, so we're just going to put this chat question out there. You can just respond in the chat window. For those who currently have huddle boards implemented, what are the biggest challenges you're facing with huddle boards? So I just want to make this webinar a little bit more relevant to you. So if you're, if you're having some challenges with your huddle boards, let me know what your current challenges are. And thank you all for letting me know that you can hear me fine. I really appreciate that. That's awesome. Challenge, making the goals meaningful to staff. Oh, I love that one. You're absolutely right, Monica. Because making the goals meaningful to staff um, is, is not, a, uh, not for the faint-hearted, and it's not really easy because you have to translate those big strategic things down to um, the frontline level to say, well, how can you actually make a difference that way? And part of our course really is to get to that level. So that's actually the level two board, Monica, is, is really, you know, uh, level one is just starting to engage people. Level two is getting into how do you translate um, your strategic metrics to day-to-day uh, activities and day-to-day -day metrics and making that meaningful. Really, really, really great point. That's a huge challenge for sure. Okay, I'll let you guys continue on um, in terms of typing those in and I and we will come back, right, Joanna, to those questions. Mm -hmm. So what are the biggest, uh, let's, let's go to the next one. So uh, Monica, when we're talking about the different levels of huddle boards, right, we start at the bottom where we talk about the just do it. So it's it's basically, um, if your organization has no experience implementing any kind of huddle board, then this is where you start, which is an employee engagement huddle board where people show up and then they share ideas. So this webinar is focused on the level one huddle boards. Level two is the big picture items, which is your true not north metrics to translate them down to the frontline level. And level three is actually doing the work to improve those metrics. So those are the three different levels of huddle boards. So in, in terms of the level one huddle board, uh, we've, we've already shared this before in our previous webinar. Um, it's 10 to 15 minutes, same time each day, each week, same meeting place. It's attended uh, by the whole team. It can be led by any one person. It doesn't have to be led by a manager or a leader, just anyone can lead it. And um, improvement ideas are actually documented and shared on forms. So how it works is an employee uh, completes a, a form, we call it a Kaizen form, and submits an idea for improvement. I'll talk a little bit more about what that form looks like and what, what it would consist of. During the huddle, new suggestions are read aloud with everybody in the room, and improvements are implemented, um, and um, you know, people say, oh, well, I'm not really interested in that one, or it doesn't work for me, or, you know, it's basically a, a, a forum for open communication, and even though you have one idea, doesn't mean that's the idea that's going to get implemented. A five-step process, simply put, is this. It's like find, which is someone actually comes up with an idea. Discuss, which is you guys actually discuss the idea. Implement, so if it's a just do it, you can go ahead and implement. You have to document the findings, though, because before you implement, all of my green belts that are on the call 
you know, when we're coaching you, you say, what's your hypothesis, right, before you implement? So your hypothesis is something is going to improve. So that needs to be clear. So you document because you validate against your hypothesis to say, oh, we thought this is how it would improve. This is how it did or didn't improve. And you share the findings. Whether the idea itself worked or not, it's always good to share because you've learned something. If you've learned it doesn't work, you found one way that it doesn't work, right? So suggest an improvement by filling out a Kaizen for everyone form. So every, every form at every site can look different. We have lots of different forms implemented at different sites. But at the very base, it has a before and after condition. So people, so you state what, what, what's happening in the before, so what's the current condition, what will the after effect be, so how will things be different, and I'll show you some examples in a bit, and um, you have to talk about the after effect, it means what's the benefit of the change. There is the ability in the form to add support signatures, to add uh, Kaizen, which is the improvement participants. Um, and really pilot the change, so the start date of the trial, planned end date of the trial. So there is different ability to do that, and every Kaizen form gets submitted there and gets reviewed onto the next step. There are definite rules. One of the rules when we, that we teach is no anonymous submissions, and that one I know initially doesn't really sit well with people, and they say, "Oh, if you really want us to share our input, you know, you should really ask us to." Um, Give you know allow us to anonymous submission work not really uh, huddle boards are not uh, there to not promote accountability they're there to be promote accountability so if you are going to put a form in you're going to sign your name beside it the only time a form actually gets thrown out is when there is no name beside it we'll ask around to say hey does anyone just forget to put their name if if there is no name it's not an idea. It doesn't, it's not owned by anybody and it's not submitted by anybody and it's very, it's a very hard rule but it actually works in promoting accountability as you go along. So there's a, there's a fast lane and a slow lane. So in the fast lane, um, the facilitator reads the suggestion. If everybody agrees, you can just do it and if you can just do it, you assign an implementer and you can run with it, right? If it's not a just do it, so you actually define the just do it criteria. In the course that we teach you, you're actually working on defining that just do it criteria. So it's an online four week course, two hours at a time. You, you work on defining that uh, criteria and go from there. So if it's, if it's not a just do it, you decide on the next steps and it's a slower lane. So for the organizations, some of our clients that are on the call, um, we are working with them and we actually come up with the model that they use to actually determine how they proceed with the bigger ideas and how they don't proceed with the bigger ideas. So that's where it goes. Um, to uh, answer your question of if, oh my God, what if, what if we, there's like it's a now suggestion box that everybody is just bringing up ideas, what do we do with it? You only move forward if there is room on the board. If there's no room on the board, you don't move forward. So you're only working on very limited ideas at a time as you're going along. So someone might ask, well, what's wrong with the way things are done today, right? Like, like we have really good teamwork and, you know, we have teams that are sort of tell, like want, need, have the need to tell us, which is normal. Um, hey, you know, we do this really well and, and we do that really well. And we said, of course you do that really well. But if you don't really have a regular touch based meeting of some sort, right, you really can't get the efficiency of a huddle board. And let me show you what I mean by that, right? So say someone has, and this is not uh, just a, uh, a fake, this is a real case study, all right? So someone says, hey, I, you know, I think I want a cart. So they tell their peer in another department, hey, do you mind? I see that cart sitting wrong. Can I just use it? And then the other peer goes, oh, I'm not sure. Uh, I don't know if somebody else in my department wants it. Okay, let me go ask this other person if they want the cart. She goes and asks the other person. The other person says, gee, yeah, I don't really need it, but I don't know if I'm allowed. Maybe we should go ask the manager if, if we're allowed to do that. So that's interaction number three, go ask the manager. Then the manager says, really? Do they really need a cart? Hold on, let me ask their manager to find out if they actually need a cart. So let me go talk to that manager. So then they go and talk to the other department manager. The other department manager then says, hmm, really? Does everybody need a cart? 
So, so he or she goes and talks to the other staff members, multiple interactions there, five, six, seven probably, uh, to say, do you, need, do, you, do you need a card? Really? Oh, do you need one? Yeah, we can use one. Okay, sounds good. So there's a few interactions because she's not confirming or he's not confirming that, yeah, we definitely need a card. That would be really helpful if you get a card. Okay, then. That's great. Let's move on. Let's let, let, let the other manager know. Interaction number eight. Hey, we would love the card. That's a great idea. Thank you so much for offering. And then she goes down and she lets her employee know, hey, you know what? Cool, no problem. They could use the card, give them the card. Okay, interaction number 10, right? Okay, the original person knows. And interaction number 11, right? We finally have a card. Hallelujah, right? And I am not exaggerating. This is not an exaggeration. This is something that happens in your day-to-day -to -day world today. It is a pretty crazy view of what happens today. If you are not huddling, if you're not touching base with different groups on a, on, on a regular basis or your own group on a regular basis, you're doing a lot of this waste that happens in your organization, right? So this is happening um, on a regular basis. So when I talk about waste, I'm just going to take uh, the segue into asking a question, a poll question around what is your experience with lean? Because lean is is uh, lean thinking is is really what helps eliminate waste. And I'm curious. So we just opened up a poll for you guys to ask you, what is your experience with lean? All right. So we have, you've heard of lean, but don't use it. You, you use some lean in the workplace. You have a certification or you're interested in lean training. Okay, awesome. That sounds great. Oh, I don't know what lean is, but I want to learn more. Okay, I think we have a we have majority of you voted, so we can probably close the poll. We can share the results with the audience to show you what the results look like. So those are your results right there. Um, so in in general, this is huddle boards is not explicitly a part of lean, but it's part of the lean culture, right? So this is a huge part of why you need to implement lean in your workplace. And what I mean by this is if you go to the next slide, I'm going to stop sharing. Oh, yeah, we've stopped sharing the poll results. Here's the future of communication. So in the before picture, do you remember how many interactions we had? 11. We had 11 different interactions because somebody wanted a cart to make their jobs easier. In the after world, right? It's simple as, hey, you want a cart? The other person's like, yeah, let's do it, right? It's a very, very simple interaction. And guess what? That wasn't the only conversation they had that morning. They probably had that times four or five other conversations about simple, quick things they needed to do to improve their work on a daily basis. And that's really what, what a huddle is about. Just to give you an idea of sample improvement uh, case studies, Here's a before and after, right? Um, in the neonatal ward, you have this fancy paper machine, right? Because you put your hand and it's all good for infection prevention, but it, it's noisy as heck. It's like, holy geez, it's very, very noisy machine. So some of the um, nurses say, hey, you know, maybe we should replace it back with the old system of just grabbing the papers out, right? Sounds counterintuitive, but really, the noise, the noise levels is the after effect, right? So you're reducing the noise levels at the end of the day. So that's, this is one example of a simple idea, right? That otherwise, if you don't have a regular way to huddle, just frustrates the hell out of you. Or you wait for your monthly meeting or something like that to bring it up, but it's not important enough, so it'll never get discussed, right? And nothing will happen. So this is the whole business case of why you actually need a huddle. Another simple idea, hey, you know, um, if, if, so, if basically someone is breastfeeding, right, 
um, you can actually put a little sign up there to say, hey, by the way, there's some kangaroo care time. So you're not actually going to go disrupt a mother who's breastfeeding and you, you know, a baby is being calm. So it's basically, that's another thing. Let's just put a sign up. You don't need a committee for it. You just put a sign up. It's as simple as that, right? Um, when we talk about cabinets, like discharge cabinets, things are all over the place before. Someone is frustrated by that. You can use 5S, that's one of your lean tools. And you say, hey, we want to put all of our discharge supplies in one drawer, right? It should help for the streamline organized discharges. Um, another organization idea, right? Things that are never used are just sitting around. You don't need those things sitting around, right? So they actually free up space to, so that you could actually positively impact patient safety, don't block access to supplies that you need, and so on and so forth, right? These sound like really, really simple ideas, right? But it's like, why don't they happen on a daily basis? Simply because we just don't have a process to make them happen on a daily basis. But when we actually implement huddles, right, there's a lot that can go wrong. So if you just do it and you say, oh, we're going to start discussing, we're going to start chatting every morning, there's a ton that can go wrong. And I'm just going to pick up four different ones, and then I'm going to get into the do's and don'ts section of, of the presentation. So what can probably go wrong is things fizzle out, right? That's one thing that, that we've seen happen, right? And it, it goes wrong whether or not you've got our help launching it, things fizzle out where people are like, ah, oh, I don't want to do this, or I don't want to do the work. You know, managers trying to control the show. So if you're a manager, you're sort of going, well, no, they need to focus on real, like, real big improvements. And, you know, um, the, the ideas are just not good enough. And they're just not leading to our true not metrics. Eh, your job as a manager right now is to just get the engagement going and get them, get them attending. Make this a habit in your, in your organization at a level one, right? Staff think it's just a trick for management to get their way. I'm not joking. It is true. Staff think, well, this is just a way for management to, to do whatever they wanted to do anyways, right? And depending on how it's launched, and that's one of the don'ts will help you, is, um, is so for staff to not think that way. And staff resent having to run with the idea in addition to their day jobs. And that's true. Like, you know, if they bring up a lot of people said, oh, we've stopped bringing up ideas because we know we have to now run with it, and we have day jobs. So what, where, when do you expect us to do this, right? So it's definitely something that happens on a day-to-day -day basis. These are some challenges, not all of them by any means, but can go wrong when you first launch your huddles. So I'm going to start with the don'ts, and then I'm going to end up with the do's. I'm going to end with the positive. So don't, in the beginning, have too heavy a focus on metrics at the onset. And I know you need to have a focus on metrics because you need to achieve goals and you need to make improvements. But in the beginning, it's really about building a habit. Get people showing up to huddles. Don't overwhelm them with numbers at this point, right? Just get them showing up. So don't have too heavy a focus on metrics at the beginning. It will get better, I promise, when you graduate to level two and three. People will naturally want those metrics, but in the beginning, don't focus too hard on them. Don't micromanage huddles, right? So you, once you have a just do a checklist, allow them to run with a just do a checklist if something meets that criteria. If there's a, a something by accident you put in a just do a checklist or that you want to add, have a review process and update that just do a checklist. But really try not to micromanage the process. This is a frontline-led meeting. Let it be a frontline-led meeting, right? Speaking of that, don't lead all of the huddles. So if you're a you know a new green belt uh, trained employee, so you're you know that that actually received the training, or if you're a manager of that department. Don't be tempted to lead all the huddles. It's tempting, but don't. Make sure that you share in the responsibility and get everybody to lead the huddles as you're going along. This is very, very hard to do. I know this is this is like um, it's it's basically we sit the reason we, we exist as coaches is because we are, you know, we're there to sort of watch people from a very neutral perspective and and it's amazing sometimes when someone's some ideas come up and you go really? like or just rolling your eyes or doing some gesture that 
not just the person submitting the idea that feels terrible, it's the person that the other people that have not submitted ideas yet go, ooh, what if my manager doesn't like that idea? They're going to they're gonna be rolling their eyes and really judging me for it. So any kind of unsupportive body language, check that at your office door, inside your office, not outside your office. Because if you have unsupportive body language, you think there are stupid ideas coming up, right? This is you're gonna you're gonna fizzle that huddle out in no time. And it just takes once or twice to do it. It really just does, right? And um, you know, uh, at the end of the day, why is an idea not a stupid idea? Why is anything that they've written down on a piece of paper, it could be something you probably think it's silly or stupid or whatever you want to call it, but it isn't because they took the time to sign their names on it. If somebody takes the time to sign their name on something, what you have to do is you have to acknowledge them and thank them for bringing that up. And you don't have to judge anything because the group judges it. We just say it together, we just say it, and when we're talking about group judging, this is the next one, don't support or participate or allow any blame or shame. So even though you're very supportive of the idea, right, as a manager or a huddle leader, you're very supportive, right? You, if there's someone else or a few other people being really unsupportive or shaming or blaming, do not allow that. Make sure you end that right off the bat. So these are some some tough things that you have to do uh, when you're actually leading huddles, right? And you don't and you don't have to be leading. You could be coaching huddles. There's a difference between leading and coaching. So you could anyone could lead a huddle. You're the one that's coaching the huddle, and that's really what who this training is for. So people coaching the actual huddles. So if you support any or participate or allow any blame or shame, you're as much responsible for it as anyone else. So a good huddle needs a really good coach to make sure, and in the beginning, to make sure it's running well, right? Oh, this is a good one. You know, don't say but, use and instead. But is an innovation killer. Oh, good idea, but, you know, you don't have to say but. Try to take but out of the language. Good idea and, and add something to the mix. So but is, is an innovation killer, for sure. Doesn't allow that. Don't throw out ideas, all right? So don't just throw them in the garbage because you saw something and you never discuss it with anyone. Follow the freaking process. <laughs> so take the idea, use the kibosh process, which typically involves celebrating and saying, hey, thanks for bringing it up. I'm glad that that idea actually came up, right? So in terms of the huddle board dues, oh, we have some questions coming up. So I will probably get to those questions in a bit. I'll get to those questions in a second as we as we go along. Oh, there we go. So in terms of do's, um, have a very clear just do it process. So always follow the process. Goes back to my last point, right? Don't just throw something out because you didn't like what they said on a particular form. Have a discussion and follow the process. If it's kibosh, it's kiboshed. You have to thank and acknowledge the person for bringing that idea up, right? Um, encourage conversation for the clarification. Encourage others to lead the meeting. That's very important. Encourage people to actually lead the meeting, and we make it really simple. We actually have like little notes on, on a little uh, piece of paper and on the brochure, so you can just read off of it. You don't have to be good at public speaking or anything, just read you know, with your head down and, and you can actually lead a huddle, no problem. Um, follow up. So as a huddle coach, you have to follow up offline on ideas that need help. So if you see like, oh, someone has that body language of, oh my God, I have to do this. Really, it's me that has to do it. So, you know, show up to the Gemba, offer your help. So if you're a green belt um, in, in training even, right, with us, you know that you get points for every little piece of help that you can provide other people with, right? Which is if you're going to help someone do a root cause analysis, if you're going to help someone collect some data, whatever it is, you know, you definitely get points for that, so definitely follow up and help them. And follow up with those who don't attend to better understand root causes. 
which, you know, and sometimes the root cause is actually you, unfortunately. <laughs> right? So it's, it's not, uh, and I'm, I don't say you in terms of, it, it could be me as well. So if I'm a leader in an organization, sometimes a lot of the times the challenges are related to me, right? So it's really important to understand the true root causes and follow up with people who are not attending offline, right? So, you know, circle back and say, hey, you know, why are you not attending or what have you? And if you're not getting a lot of traction, get someone else to follow up. Make sure you keep a list of who has submitted how many ideas and keep a track of your attendance and other metrics. This is really important. Why? Because if you don't keep a track of your attendance and other metrics, which is how many ideas were submitted, how many were completed, how many were kiboshed, you have no way of measuring huddle board success. I know organizations that have 90 huddle boards in one organization. And it is a fairly big organization, but there's 90 of them in one organization. And they can only monitor and measure their performance because they have the dashboard. If you don't have a way of tracking the metrics, and that's part of the training, so we, we teach you how to implement that dashboard, but you need to have a way to keep track of your metrics. You need to celebrate successes and celebrate ideas, whether they go forward or get kiboshed. That's really important. So celebration is key because you're keeping the momentum going and you're teaching people that it's good to just come up with ideas. Whether or not they get implemented is a completely different story. It's great to come up with ideas and have a discussion about them. So um, basically, what we're teaching you is how to be a good huddle coach at the end of it. That's all we're teaching you, is how to be a good huddle coach. So in order for you to be a good huddle coach, where you start is get your organization buy-in. So you share our webinars, uh, we'll send you a business case letter and the follow-up email that we send to you in terms of uh, why you need to attend a green belt training or, or one of these huddle courses. And it basically um, is around organizational efficiencies, engaging your workforce, right? And using the masses to make mass improvements instead of using the few people at the top to make the improvements, right? Pick a specific area first. So if you if your organization is not working with us right now for operational excellence, if you guys are, if you're just one manager coming here going, oh, maybe I'm gonna try this out and see if it'll work in my area, right? Pick, pick one area, just see, you know, and, and typically an area is a good area to implement is something where a lot happens every day. So it's a busy place, should be somewhere that you wanna implement this. You don't want to implement this in a non-busy place. A busy place is a good place to implement because there's always new things happening and, and there's going to be lots of room for improvement. Step number three is attend one of our green belt courses or a huddle board course. So we have a couple of different courses. Um, the green belt, a lot of you on the call right now on the webinar are, are in our green belt training and um, because you are part of that bigger community of practice, right? Um, on the huddle board course is just there in case you don't want to do any like lean thing and you don't, you don't want to go all the way down the lean journey. You just want to understand how to do a huddle board. So we are just giving you just that option of joining the huddle board course. The green belt is actually a, a short in-person day and a half. Um, and then we actually follow up with you in your workplace with like personal coaching calls. But the huddle board is an online only thing where it's just over four weeks, very, very short sessions. So I'll talk about that later. Um, launch the board um, and uh, move forward from there. Study your initial results, right? So you, when, once you launch your board, your, your work's not done. You have to study the results of what's happening, what's not happening. Make the improvements because you have certain targets. You're hoping for a certain amount of attendance. You're not getting that. So we're going to help you make that those improvements as you go. And on um, point number seven is continue to monitor, adjust, and keep track of successes. So I know one organization that's keeping track of financial um, impact of, of all of the, just the random ideas that are coming up. And they actually saved, I believe $29,000. This is a fairly large operation in the way they process their oatmeal. So it was, you know, they, it, it was a long, it's a long-term care home. And I think they decided to, either microwave their oatmeal instead of getting it ready-made and they save $29,000 over the course of a year by just making a small change that came out of, an, of, a, of a huddle. So that in itself should give you a, you know, a business case to move forward and implement a huddle. So um, 
so here's the online training, but I'm just going to answer the question that came up. So the question was, do you have to be a green belt, a green belt to run a huddle? So um, the answer is no. You do not have to be a lean green belt to run a huddle. If you're wondering what a lean, oh, there's the coupon discount for the huddle board online training. Um, we'll send that to you via email as well. But um, the so this is the lean green belt training. We just have a short um, view of it. But no, you do not need to be a green belt. A green belt is really someone that leads improvement projects. Um, they can coach huddles in the workplace. It is a professional designation that you get, and um, you are you are part of a broader community of practice with a lot of the other leaders. But you do not need to be a green belt to actually. Uh, coach a huddle. In order for you to coach a huddle, you need to really understand huddles ins, ins and outs, and that's where the huddle board online training is about. So it's, uh, but if you have lean running in your organization, we have disrupted, we have really disrupted the lean training market. So Joanna will actually share a link to a blog in the, um, in your chat window, so you can actually see um, how we've disrupted the lean training market. For you guys, in terms of um, you know pulling people out of the workplace, we used to pull them out for three days or five days. Now we pull them out for a day and a half, and then instead of having you in our classroom, we are in your workroom. <laughs> so we actually come into your workroom and follow up with you uh, using one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions as we go along. So that's um, and and uh, as when Joanna shares the link with you you will understand the whole, we are the only organization that actually does lean in a lean way. We are the only organization that's actually reduced in-class time to increase effectiveness in the workplace of the application of the lean tools uh, that, we're, that we're using. So really proud of that and uh, couldn't, couldn't have worked without inspiration from Karen Ross, who uh, We'll also send you a link about that uh, news release that's coming out because we just recently partnered with Karen Ross, who's um, a award-winning um, shingle who just recently won the shingle award for her book uh, *Lean and Service Excellence*. So we're really, really grateful to be working with Karen Ross, especially in the service sector side of things. So I wanted to land this uh, as tightly as I could, which I have. So hopefully, I didn't. I didn't talk too fast. I'm just going to pause and ask for questions at this time to see if you guys have any questions come up. Um, and I can definitely take those questions and going from there. So pause. How much is the Lean Green Belt training? Oh, I, we didn't put a cost there. It's actually, um, if you're a private sector organization, it's almost nothing because it's covered with the Canada Ontario Job Grant. But it is, uh, I, I believe it's $2,500 for one person or 22 if you send more than one person. So that's the, uh, that's the, the price difference in, in, in the training. And it's, um, Maybe what we can do is we can send out dates that are for the training that's coming up. The currently the training sessions are scheduled. So where where are the training sessions scheduled? They're currently scheduled in Timmins and Sudbury, but we are pretty much opening open to scheduling sessions anywhere as long as we have about twelve students. Um, even if it's just community partners getting together and put, putting a session together, we can easily come out and do that session. And it's literally only a day and a half, and you have a lot of coaching time that you get along with it. So it's, it's a pretty easy one. The Heidelberg course is just online. Yes, it's online only, but we do do, um, let me just go over that one. We do do one-on-one um, uh, -on -one coaching sessions with the different organizations as we go. And it is $1,000 per organization. That's what it is. 
it's not per participant, it's per organization, and 100 bucks for every participant that you want to send to the course. That's what it is, instead of 1399. All right, so I think we're going to land this right here. I'm just making sure I'm not missing any more of your questions. Well, this I wanted to keep it short and sweet, which we have, which is awesome. So thank you very much, everybody, for attending today. And uh, yeah, you know, let us know what you want to hear about next. Actually, what, what are our next webinars that are coming up, Joanna? I should probably go to our website and see if you can see our <clears throat> our next webinars. So, oh, so we have a very exciting, um, so if you go to yourpace.ca, could you just put that URL there, slash events. So we actually have two free webinars coming up, very exciting webinars. One is from the author uh, of QBQ. So um, QBQ, I don't know if you know, but we, we kind of mentioned this at, at some of our sessions. It's, it's about personal accountability. So Kristen Lindeen, I don't know if you can see my screen here, but Kristen Lindeen is uh, basically a personal accountability expert, right? And she's, she's doing a webinar called Busting the Blame. So you know how I talked about that finger pointing, blame and shame? So she's doing a webinar about that. Do you want to maybe just share the webinar link in the... In, in the chat window. So you can actually click on that register button and actually register for that particular link. So there's a free webinar coming up with that. And there is a free webinar coming up with Leading Lean. So we have Crystal Davis, um, who's uh, the CEO of Lean Coach Inc. And she is going to teach how to leverage daily management for lean leaders. So Monica, um, that might be a good, um, that, that may be a good one for you because it's actually specifically around making connections between daily issues, continuous improvement, and strategy deployment to achieve metric targets for the month, quarter, or year. So this one's very, very focused on exactly the question you asked, Monica, around how do you tie those big picture objectives into the particular goals. So definitely take a look at that one. And uh, we will send out the yourpace.ca slash events into the, uh, in, into the, in the email that we follow up with. But Kristen Lindeen's webinar, just so you guys know, will not be available online. It's a live session, 45 minute, one time only, uh, on Tuesday, September 12th. Um, Get people sort of huddled up in a room to to listen to her because she's a is a lot about personal accountability, and you know we all know someone who could use personal accountability. We say it's a joke, really, because you are the one that needs the personal accountability. <laughs> so bring your friends and bring yourself because it's about really taking control of your life and and moving things forward in a positive manner. But that's pretty much it for all the free stuff we have to give away today. Um, Joanna will be sending out a follow-up email and thank you so much everybody for attending. I really, really appreciate your time and um, looking forward to, uh, oh hold on, I, Joanna just reminded me that I never do this, I never go to the contact us slide. There's the contact us slide um, and if you, if you would, wouldn't mind, we would appreciate a follow-up on our Twitter, on our Facebook and on our YouTube channel as well. We're just trying to build this online community of practice and we're just building this community to, to give free things to you guys. So hopefully you can use it, you can apply it, and definitely please reach out to me if you have any questions, any comments, anything. would love to hear from you. All right, thank you so much, everybody. Really, really appreciate your time.